Yo, what's going on guys? Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm not currently because it is 33 degrees and it's hot and I don't like the heat at all. So, so I was thinking we could do some again with those planes. So I was thinking we could do some filming inside today. How to make yourself float in a photo. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. I might use this down light. I might place a chair here, sit on the chair with my legs crossed. But I need to make the house darker. So turn that one off. And close these blinds. All right. I think that might work. So I'm thinking that maybe wearing a hoodie, like, so it covers the top part of my face, might help with this photo. I'm gonna quickly run upstairs, grab a hoodie, and I'll be back down. Ow. Mm, my funny bone. Oh, that hurt. Got the hoodie. All right, so now I need to chuck this camera on that tripod, and then put another camera up on the counter, so then you guys can see what I'm doing. So I need to go back upstairs and get another camera. All right, so I've just set the camera up. I've got my 5D Mark IV with a 50mm 1.8 over here. I've got it connected to my phone so I can remote trigger it from over there. So yeah, let's take a couple photos. So now since we've taken some photos sitting on the chair, now we're gonna take some photos without the chair in there. So it's just pretty much the background. And you'll see why when we go into Photoshop and when we merge both together, so. All right, so now once you've imported both photos into Photoshop, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the layer with you in it on top of your background layer. Now make sure you've got the top layer selected, then go over to the opacity slider, turn it down to about 50% so both photos are visible, and from there just move the top layer around so it lines up with the bottom layer. Once that's done and you're happy with it, make sure the top layer selected, go back to the opacity slider and just turn that back up to 100. Now keep your top layer selected, then come down to the bottom to create a layer mask, then you're gonna to wanna to come over to the brush tool, make sure you've got the color set to black. If it's not set to black, you can toggle by hitting X on your keyboard or hitting the little arrow between black and white. But for this, we're gonna need the color set to black because we are gonna paint away that chair. Now, since I took this photo when it was quite dark, I'm gonna come down to the original top layer, not the layer mask, but click on the original top layer, then come up to the top where it says image, click on adjustments, then go to brightness and contrast. From here, I'm just going to turn the brightness all the way up to 150, so I can see what I'm working with when it comes to removing the rest of the chair. Now, once you've done that, come over to the lasso tool. Lasso, lasso. Lasso, eh, whatever. Make sure you've got the lasso tool selected and also make sure you've got your top layer mask selected. Then all we're pretty much doing is just drawing around that chair. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now go back to the brush tool, make sure you've got the color set to black and all you're gonna do is just paint away the rest of the chair. Click Command D to deselect. Now, looking at this image, it's looking a little choppy. That's because the top layer is brighter than the bottom layer. 
So what we're gonna need to do is go to where it says image, click on adjustments, go to brightness and contrast, and we're gonna to have to turn that top layer back to negative 150. Because if you remember before, I had to change the exposure or the brightness to positive 150, so I could see what I was working with when it came to masking around the chair. All right, that looks pretty good. I am happy with that. But one thing I do wanna to do to make this a little bit more realistic is to add a shadow underneath me. So I'm gonna do that by selecting the bottom layer, going over to the brush tool and changing the opacity to about 12. And then all I'm gonna do is just paint a circle underneath me. Nothing too fancy, just something that looks like a shadow. Now, once that's done, we can export the photo, save it as a JPEG, and then we can move that photo into Lightroom and we can do some final adjustments. So because I forgot to film an outro for this video, I'm just gonna do it here. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please consider smashing that like button, go down there, hit subscribe, and all of that stuff down below. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good one, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.